what happened to Bilawal Bhutto Zardari's uh, position? Because everybody was eyeing on the fact that the entire campaign of Pakistan People's Party was focused on the young and charismatic leadership of Bilawal Bhutto. And now we see his father in the presidency and he is nowhere to be seen. How do you look at that? Well, I think um, Zardari, Mr. Zardari uh, is weighing the role of uh, Bilawal very carefully. He's the candidate for the prime ministership. That much we are, you know, we are clear and, and they've also said it repeatedly. This time around, that was not happening. So it was a difficult choice. And I think that Dari Saab probably also um, feels that he shouldn't uh, get uh, Bilawal into the position of uh, the prime minister at a time where the situation is probably the most difficult that we've seen in, in decades. So he would probably not want to put him in such a, such a precarious position. This time around, of course, if he re negotiated really hard, he could have found a space one way or the other for Bilawal to become the Prime Minister. But I think he probably calculated and so did um, you know, other people in his party that this was not the way to launch him into the Prime Minister's office. So waiting another term, waiting another couple of years, we don't know. We, we do know that uh, it is highly un unlikely that governments finish uh, their entire five-year tenure. So g given the past track record, perhaps Mr. Zadari is waiting for a better time to launch um, uh, Bilawal back into into um, uh, the Prime Minister's office. Not back into the, uh, into the Prime Minister's office, but um, for the first time. But for that to happen, he clearly it requires a greater leverage within Punjab. He mm -hmm. also knows that at this particular point, uh, the, the, his party's position in Punjab is uh, very precarious. So perhaps these couple of years, however, however many years that he's calculated, he would want to have some sort of a better electoral strength in the Punjab so he can place uh, Bilawal uh, in a better position to, for, a, for a bid for the Prime Ministership. Okay, so uh, coming back to the real wheel that has to be pushed, which is IMF. Uh, there are eminent decisions to be taken by this government now and there are no, no ifs and buts involved. The government is going to IMF, Mr. Malik, and IMF has very clearly stated uh, what they want, broaden the tax base and don't tax the rich, uh, the poor only, the salaried class only, energy sector reforms, institutional governance and anti-corruption. This is a massive agenda from IMF. Do you think uh, the two parties are going to share it? Uh, just one comment before that about what uh, Fahad said. I think I totally agree with him. This would have been the worst time to push uh, Bilawal into the Prime Minister's office. All the toughest economic decisions have to be taken and everything. And he's just waiting silently in the wings. Uh, in the first, in the PDM government, I think Zadaisa made a brilliant choice to, to make him the foreign minister. He got a world exposure. He played on the, on the bigger stage. And now he can easily wait whether it turn, comes three years down the road or five years down the road. I think that's a brilliant uh, strategy for him. Coming back to the IMF, as far I'm concerned, I see IMF as a brilliant thing. I think it's a, our prayers as a common man answered. I know this answer might sound shocking to you. Where are we where we are now, right now? We're at the bottom of the pit. Why? Because of the endless uh, bad governance and bad fiscal and monetary decisions of all the governments, whether it was PMLN, People's Party, everybody kept passing the buck. They did not take policy reform structure changes. They did not make choices that were right and not necessarily popular. Now they have to do all the right things by, by the force of hand. They don't have a choice. I mean, what is it? People keep abusing IMF. What does IMF say? IMF say broaden your tax base. IMF says reduce government expenses. IMF says spend less than what you earn. IMF says get rid of loss-making state-owned enterprises. What is wrong in what IMF is saying? Now, like you gave an example of taxation. Right now, they're the, the salary is being directly being uh, paying one of the highest tax brackets in the world. Then you pay indirect taxes in the form of all the things being imposed on petrol, fuel, all this stuff. So it's a very unfair tax regime. Government itself says over 800 billion a year are being lost uh, through, through tax collection frauds. Right. You're losing like uh, you have trillions, uh, everything. So. IMF has to come in and I think IMF just might save this country.